We've looked at GeoGebra apps before. In this particular app, I build a slider, alpha, and alpha can be anything from zero up to about six. Now in the app, the things that we're showing is that length alpha shows up in a number of different places. Right here, this is what the length of alpha is. So if alpha is 3.2, then the length from B to E is 3.2. If I slide alpha down to round 1, there's alpha. Now the length of this arc from B to B prime is also alpha. So if we took that line segment and wrapped it around that circle, that's how far it would get to. So alpha is measuring the number of radians that we are. This is a length of one right here. And so alpha is measuring a radian angle. So if we get to, to six, if we're able to get to two pi, that would be more than six. I'd be all the way at 360 degrees. Okay, so there I'm at, at six radians, not quite enough to get all the way around the circle. So there we are back to zero. Now over in this part, we're, we're uh, graphing the sine. So we're inserting this length right here is also alpha. Okay, notice that this comes to zero. Then the length from zero out to k is the length of whatever alpha is. So there we are, this length is now six. That length is the same as this one, is the same as this one going all the way around here. So on the x-axis of this plot, we're showing the measure of alpha, the angle that we're putting into this thing. What we're plotting then, this height right here, is whatever this y value of b prime is. Might be helpful to, uh, let's just, just uh, put in a, a line set, well, let, let's do it this way. Let's build a, uh, a line that's uh, perpendicular through this point and perpendicular to that. Okay, so that's going to help us see this line segment is going to help us see that that y value of b, oops, let me come up here and get this, that that y value of b prime is whatever this is. See, whatever the y value of b prime is, that's a negative something, it's below the x-axis. And so sure enough, this length right here is that little bit below the x-axis. Okay, the x-axis runs all the way along here. All right, we know that the sine is the y value on a unit circle. So that's what the graph of the sine is. A lot of things to look at here. It's a complicated function. But here's what's happening. We put some alpha into the sine, say 0 0.8. It measures this length, 0 0.8, wraps that length around a unit circle, and then finds this particular y value so there's 0 0.8 that plots that particular y value. So the graph of a sine function looks like that. Notice that we start out at 0, then as alpha increases, that y value increases until we get to uh, pi over 2 to, to around 90 degrees. And then the the y value starts to get smaller and smaller till we get out there to pi radians or 180 degrees. And then 
the y value becomes negative for a while till we get down to a negative 1 at 270 degrees then it begins to come smaller and if we were, had made this if we'd made the slider long enough that we could get out to 2 pi then we'd finally get back to to zero we're not quite at zero now we're at a negative something okay that's how the graph of a sine works up and down and it would just continue on that same particular shape. Okay, graph of a sine. Let me slide it once again for you. From zero, the y value increases, increases, and decreases, decreases, becomes zero, becomes negative, until it gets to a negative one, and then begins to increase until it gets back to zero.